Hi, this is Eric Sloof with uh, another great online training session. In this session I'm going to show you how you can add a nice Kuzi uh, target based on Starwind to uh, a regular Windows 2008 machine. And the nice part is that we are going to use Round Robin as a multipathing policy. So I already created a Windows 2008 machine. Uh, I will show you the settings. The machine has two hard disks, uh, the C drive is 40 gigabytes it holds the windows installation and the starwind software the d drive is 20 gigabytes this will be used as uh, the ice cozy storage uh, it's also configured with two network adapters i did it on purpose because esx 4 r where the virtual machine is hosted uh, when i'm going to networking has two dedicated virtual switches ice cozy 1 and ice cozy 2 with the are the names of the port groups and most the virtual network adapters of Windows 2008 are configured and attached to uh, an indi individual switch and a, a dedicated physical network card. On the other end, at my L server, my left server, uh, I'm hosting Windows 7. I'm going to eventually add uh, a nice Kuzi disk to this virtual machine or a VMDK file hosted on iSCSI storage. And in this virtual machine, we are going to do some uh, some testing, some I.O. testing. So uh, let's get started. Windows 2008. I'm running a nice utility called the VM Client. Uh, I already fired up the Starwind software. It's really, really easy to ins install. Just double click the setup.exe uh, and you will, uh, within a few minutes, you are uh, running your iSCSI target. But before you can actually use it, you have to add a target. I'm going to call this target test. I'm going to use an IQN name to present the target. Actually, I'm using a hard disk uh, because the VMDK file of 20 gigabytes uh, at the Windows 2008 machine uh, is a hard disk. It's a physical disk and it's this drive. Okay, I'm going to use it for multiple iSCSI connections. It's going to be clustered. Uh, and I'm going to do right through caching. So that looks fine. Next, finish. So the iSCSI target is created. So the Windows 2008 machine is presenting this iSCSI target uh, to the outside world. You can put in access rights, you can put in chip uh, permissions, but we're gonna not going to do this right now. So next thing I have to do is configure my ESX4L server. Uh, I'm I have to go to the storage adapters and at VMHBA34 you will see uh, that I can adjust properties and I have to enable the iSCSI software iSCSI initiator. Once I have enabled the software iSCSI initiator, I have to add the two IP addresses for my Windows 2008 server. So that's 192.168.178.25. And it's the second address is 55, but I have to check on that. 192.168.178.55. Okay, so when you are adding an IP address to Dynamic Discovery, uh, it will uh, show up in Static Discovery automatically with an IQN name. We can, we're not going to do a rescan right now. Uh, let's check on those IP addresses, 55 and 25 so those cor uh, addresses are correct um, what I did on my ESX 4 L server uh, when I'm going to networking is that I've added two kernel port groups to this host and both kernel port groups are connected to the same uh, virtual switch and the switch is configured with two physical network cards when you are going to use multiple kernel port groups within an iSCSI environment you have to bind those kernel port groups through uh, a to a network card and to the software iSCSI initiator. So I am logged on to my L server with PuTTY and I have to bind the software iSCSI initiator to the VM kernel port group. So I already prepared this line. It what it actually does is okay. What it actually does is that. You are using ESX CLI, software iSCSI, NIC add, and you're adding the VM kernel port group 0 to VM HBA 34. We also are going to do this with VM K1. So I'm copying the, oh, I'm copying this code. 
Pasting it into Putty, so both uh, kernel port groups are have a binding relation with the software iSchools initiator. Let's check it. And you can do a list on VMK1 and VMK0. It looks okay. So, when that's done, we have to see if the iSchoolsy storage is presented to our ESX host. So, the storage adapter is configured. When we are going to storage, uh, and we are adding storage, we should see the iSchoolsy target, but I think we have to do a rescan first. So, let's rescan VMHBA34. And uh, it's rescanning now. Maybe we need to reboot the ESX host. I had several, I did several tests, and it was showing, uh, it was showing six path or showing the wrong path. So actually, it looks okay. So what we see here is uh, one. It's it's all it's fixed. We see one active path on 25. You see it right here. We see one active path on 25 for both kernel port groups, controller one and controller zero, and we see controller two and controller three, but at 55. So this looks okay. We have actually uh, already multi-pathing, uh, but the policy is still configured at uh, at fixed. So when I'm going to storage, I must be able to add a data store. A data store hosted on the Windows 2008 machine. There it is, 20 gigabytes. Next, next. I'm going to call this Starwind. Okay, Starwind. Next. One MB is okay. Finish. So actually, I'm creating a VMFS data store right now on the Windows 2008 machine, located on the other ESX host. It will take some time, but uh, it will show up right here. There it is, the Starwind storage is added. So the next step we have to do is go to the configuration of my Windows 7 machine, and we are going to add an additional hard disk to this virtual machine, and this hard disk will be located on the newly created data store on Windows 2008. So uh, let's create a hard, di hard disk of eight gigabytes. It's just for uh, to do some load balance testing. Uh, okay, Starwind, next, finish. Let's see if this works out. It's still creating a VMFS data store. It's completed. It's adding the hard disk. It's completed. Okay, that's fine. That's smooth. So there is a hard disk created on the data store. Let's check if the hard disk is actually there. Yeah, there it is. So there's my eight gigabyte on the iSCSI storage. I have to do some additional configuring because uh, we are going to put in round robin as our load balancing method, but. I'm not going to do that before I can show you that we are actually using one path. So I'm returning to my VM client, I'm going to Windows 7, and uh, in within Windows 7 I already installed uh, HD Tune Pro, yes, and this virtual machine uh, will now detect that there is uh, an additional hard disk added, it's 8 gigabytes. And before you can use uh, an, an extra hard disk for I.O. measurements, you always have to zero it out. So uh, what I'm going to do is do an error scan. No, I'm not going to do an error scan. I'm going to erase this disk and do a zero fill. And I will run a write test. So all the bits are written to zero right now. You already can get a good indication of the speed in which this disk is writable. So it's around 20 MBs per second. It's, it's writing all zeros. So you can get a little bit of an estimate of how fast the disk will, uh, will be. So I'm gonna pause the recording for a moment until the disk is finished with uh, writing to zero. So we are uh, resuming the recording. The hard disk is uh, eventually is completely erased. Uh, and we can do some benchmarking. So when I'm hitting the benchmark tab and I'm gonna generate some I.O. On, uh, on the disk, we are going to peek what's happening on the background. So uh, my ESX4 host is equipped with two physical network adapters right here, networking, VMNIC2 and VMNIC4. So let's take a look at the performance tab and see which network cards card is used for uh, for all the traffic. So I'm going to the advanced uh, performance tab. We are going to look at network 
and VMNIC 2 and 4 are the network cards I'm really interested in. So VMNIC 2 is showing up. Uh, we already see some traffic on VMNIC 2. Uh, let's take a close look at VMNIC 4. Where is it? VMNIC 4. VMNIC 4 is right here and we have to look at the transmit rate. VMNIC 4 is also uh, uh, already... Uh, ne VMNIC 4 is flat, so only VMNIC 2 is used right now. Uh, that is caused by the policy we have configured for multipathing on iSCSI. So when I'm going to storage and I'm going to the Starwind data store and I'm going to the properties of the Starwind data store, there's a button right here called Minute Path and Minute Path will show us that uh, the fixed policy is selected. So there's only one active I.O. path. Uh, what I want to do is round robin, so I'm going to put it on round robin. And when you have configured round robin, you will see that uh, all the four paths are active. So that's cool. Let's look if the paths are actually all active. First, let's check in this virtual machine if there is still uh, some traffic. Yes, there is around 30 MBs per second. Uh, so when I'm going to ESX4, and I'm going to my uh, performance tab again. And uh, we're going to check out VMNIC 4. And VMNIC 4 is still doing nothing. VMNIC 2 is doing... Sorry, I selected the wrong one. VMNIC 2 is going crazy. VMNIC 4 is still doing nothing. So, okay. Uh, I think I have to reboot the ESX host. So let's reboot this host and when it's rebooted i will resume the recording so we're going to resume recording i just rebooted uh, esx4 l and uh, i actually i found a problem when i'm looking at the network adapters for this host uh, only one network adapter is used even though when we are going to the configuration of esx4 l and we are looking at the way how uh, the Starwind data store is configured. We're going to the properties minutes path. We see that it's configured with round robin and all paths are active. But you have to put in an additional setting and it has to do with uh, the point where uh, the adapter is changed from one to another. You can uh, you can pitch a, f uh, a switch over point. So actually when you are going to the properties of your data store and you are going to the path management, you can select one of your path and you can copy the path to your clipboard. When you are going, it co going to copy it to your clipboard, you will notice that there is an EUI number in it and you will need this EUI number to, d to configure the way around Robin will do the, f the, the switch over to the other network card. So what I did here is ESX CLI, uh, native multipathing, round Robin, set config. The device is EUI. It's the same device uh, that I extracted from uh, the line. The type is bytes and I'm going to switch over every 1 MB. So when I'm copying this line to my putty session and I paste it in, it's accepted. So uh, I'm going back to my Windows, uh, my Windows machine, Windows 7 machine. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, some additional load testing from this virtual machine. So I'm gonna start 100% uh, read again, and let's see what the network adapters on the Windows 2008 machine are doing. So they should be loaded equally now because uh, every 1 MB there is a switch over to the other network card and what you actually see is that both both cards are used equally so when we are going to look at the kernel port groups on this ESX host uh, when we are going to networking uh, both VMK1 and VMK0 uh, should be fully uh, VMDIC4 and VMDIC2 should be fully uh, loaded or loaded with the same amount of data so let's go to performance Let's check out the advanced button. Let's go to networking. Sorry, networking. Yes, here it is right here. So we were actually using VMNIC 4 and VMNIC 2. 
Um, so VMNIC2 is right here. And we see that there is some load on VMNIC2. We are also going to check out VMNIC4 if it's available yet. Where is it? VMNIC4 is right here. So VMNIC4 is also showing s uh, 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 a bit of equal load. So what you see is that you can actually put in uh, a round robin config value and you can do uh, a switch on the number of bytes or on the number of IOPS. And uh, you can play with those settings. You're just running uh, a great iSCSI target on a Windows machine and uh, you can get familiar with those uh, with those settings. Especially handy when you are uh, preparing yourself for uh, the new VMware Certified Advanced Professional exams. So don't forget to download the VM Client. It's uh, available at vmclient.nl and it's great to give access to your virtual machines. So. Uh, good luck with it. Eric Sloof is signing off and uh, I hope you have enjoyed the show. See you next time.